In this lesson I'm going to talk about the dot product. We also call this a scalar product. The dot product refers to the way it's written on the paper using that uh, dot for the multiplication. However, scalar product gives you a very clear idea as to what the result of this product is going to represent. The dot product between two vectors is going to result into a scalar. And let's actually look on this diagram where I have um, two vectors, A and B, and all we know is the angle between these two vectors. Let's call that theta. By definition, the dot product of two vectors arranged in this configuration of tail to tail, for which we know the angle between the two vectors, in our case theta, the dot product is going to be equal to the magnitude of one vector times the magnitude of the other vector times the cosine of the angle between them, given the condition for the angle theta to be between 0 and 180 degrees. The result for a dot product is actually going to be a scalar. For those of you who enjoy using the cross product for the multiplication in general, at least for the length of this chapter, you're going to have to make an exception and um, consider using the dot and the cross in the right uh, place. You may wonder why do we need this dot product or how is this useful? This dot product is especially useful in physics and uh, I'm going to define also with this occasion the mechanical work or simply the work that we're going to use throughout uh, this chapter. So the work represents the product of the magnitude of the displacement traveled by an object and the magnitude of the force applied in the direction of that motion. If we look on those, uh, these two vectors, uh, generically uh, named A and B, but if the displacement vector for me was A, if I project this vector B on A, its magnitude, it's easy to calculate, its magnitude of B times cosine of theta and the work is exactly the product of the magnitude of A and the magnitude of this uh, segment so basically the projection of B on A. So now that we defined this uh, dot product let's see several properties that we have for the dot product. So for any u, v and w non-zero vectors and a scalar k which is a real number. The first property that I'm going to give you is that u and v are perpendicular if and only if the dot product between u and v equals zero. You see this expression here, if and only if. This expression also means that the reciprocal of this uh, statement is valid as well. So if and only if means that u and v are perpendicular. That means that the dot product between u and v is 0 and also means that if the dot product between u and v is 0 then those two vectors are perpendicular. The second property is the commutative property so the dot product between u and v it's equal to the dot product between v and u. Let's see what happens when we have the dot product between ku a scalar multiple of a vector and v a vector well, this is equal to, we can factor out this k. So it's going to be equal to k times the dot product between u and v. Or we can even say it's u dot product with k v. And that's possible due to the associative property of the dot product. Now, let's see another uh, property, the fourth property. The dot product between u and the sum v plus w equals to the dot product between u and v plus the dot product between u and w. And of course uh, this property works also if for example we had a sum v plus w dot product with u. It's going to be v dot u plus w dot u. So this is the distributive property. Now the fifth property the dot product between a vector and itself so u dot u is actually equal to the magnitude of that vector at power 2. I mean look at the definition of the dot product. It's going to be the magnitude of one vector times the magnitude of the other so I'm going to have the magnitude of u 
times magnitude of u. So it's going to be magnitude of u at power 2 times cosine of the angle between them. Since it is the same vector, the angle between the vector and itself is 0, right? So cosine of 0, we know it's equal to 1. And the dot product between a vector and a 0 vector is going to equal 0. So these are properties that you really need to know in order to work with dot products from now on. Now I cannot conclude the lesson just yet because you see I express these vectors in a geometric fashion but I just said I'm going to talk about algebraic vectors in this uh, chapter so we cannot finish before we talk about the dot product of uh, two vectors expressed in an algebraic format. So let's just take the two vectors a which is a1 a2 the x and y components of this uh, vector and b expressed as b1 b2 the dot product between these two algebraic vectors is going to be a1 b1 plus a2 b2 you see a very nice format and very fast for calculating the dot product between two vectors in the 2d space let's actually prove that this is right so like I had before the vector a and b and the angle between them theta and I'm going to use also the vector c to find the relation between these two vectors somehow so first of all for geometric vectors I already know by definition the dot product of two vectors a and b is going to be the magnitude of a times magnitude of b times cosine of the angle between them this is what we just defined earlier we also know that this vector c is nothing else than a minus b is the difference of those two vectors as we know from the triangle method of addition and subtraction but I can very easily calculate the algebraic form for this uh, C vector so a minus b we know is a1 minus b1 a2 minus b2 this is the algebraic form for this vector C I'm gonna express this vector C the magnitude for vector C using the cosine law because this triangle is not a right triangle so I can have any angles around here the magnitude of C square is equal to magnitude of a square plus magnitude of b square minus 2 magnitude of a magnitude of b times the cosine that's opposing this side c this vector c why I did all this because look at the definition of this um, of the dot product in the geometric form I have this magnitude of a magnitude of b cosine of theta that's exactly what I recognize in this expression for cosine law I'm going to reorganize all this expression to isolate what I have in the dot product in the definition of the dot product so I'm going to move all this expression on the left side and uh, the magnitude of C square I'm going to move it on the right side so that's gonna become 2 magnitude of a magnitude of B cosine of theta equals to magnitude of a square plus magnitude of B square minus magnitude of C square of course I can divide by 2 or just move these two on the right side as well and that's that expression is going to become magnitude of a magnitude of b cosine of theta equals to magnitude square of a plus magnitude square of b minus magnitude square of c everything divided by two and now I can recognize this is exactly the definition of the dot product between a and b so I'm going to replace that with dot product between a and b equals to and instead of these magnitudes I'm going to express all the magnitudes in their algebraic format. So the magnitude square of a is going to be a1 square plus a2 square. Same thing for magnitude square of b is going to be b1 square plus b2 square minus the magnitude square of c is a1 minus b1 square plus a2 minus b2 square. I'm just going to expand this parenthesis I'll continue saying I'll copy all these first terms and then expanding this a1 minus b1 square we know it's a1 square minus 2 a1 b1 plus b1 square but with a negative sign in front of it is going to become what I just wrote there and the same expansion is going to be taking place for the second parenthesis and is going to result in minus a2 square plus 2 a2 b2 minus b2 square now let's just look for 
like terms that uh, cancel each other out. So I'm starting to cancel out all these terms that I see are exactly the same and with a positive and negative sign. So uh, we're gonna be left from all this expression with only 2a1b1 plus 2a2b2 everything divided by 2. Uh, obviously 2 is going to be uh, factored out on the numerator and cancel the 1 in the denominator and the entire expression equals to a1b1 plus a2b2. This is exactly what I gave you for the dot product in an algebraic format. So it is true for any non-zero vectors a and b that's how you calculate a dot product in an algebraic fashion. I'm going to conclude the lesson right now. Thanks for watching.